Hello, Kidney Warriors! James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is a very special episode of Dadvice TV Live, a Friday night one. We're going to see how things go on a Friday night. Hopefully, you're not all out partying, doing all sorts of good stuff, and having fun. You're learning about kidney disease. Now, for those of you that are new, welcome. Great to have you here. You're going to find us very informative, helpful, and positive. So make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe to the Dadvice TV channel. And if you want to learn more or see past videos from co-hosts that we've had here, jump on over to dadvicetv.com. Lots of great stuff there, including links that are very helpful for those that are newly diagnosed with kidney disease. Now, if you are new, let me introduce myself. My name's James. I am a kidney warrior. I call myself a warrior because I'm fighting kidney disease and kicking it to the curb. I was diagnosed with stage five. And the doctors didn't give me a good outlook. They actually told me I needed to get dialysis or else my wife had to go pick out a casket. Well, I did not go on dialysis. I didn't get in the casket. I'm here. I instead focused on my health. I started exercising. I started eating right. Everything I could do, I did. That helped improve my health. And as my health got better, so did my labs. Now my kidneys, they're still shot. There's no fixing the damage to my kidneys. It's forever. But by living better, eating better, I am reducing the burden that I'm putting on my kidneys. And we've kind of come to an agreement that the kidneys will keep working. They'll give me the energy I need, and I'm just not going to do ask too much of them and not do the bad things that, that they don't like. Now, tonight, not only is it a Friday night episode, which is very special um, here at Dadvice TV, we are going to meet a brand new renal dietitian from Plant Powered Kidneys. Now, you guys know, whenever I say Plant Powered Kidneys, usually it's Jen Hernandez here. Well, her team is growing. There are so many people out there that need help understanding what to eat. They're afraid to eat food. They think if they eat a, an avocado or a banana, their diet is going to get completely wrecked, which is not true. That's why it's so important to work with the renal dietitian. So let's go ahead. I'm going to introduce our, I make sure I got all my buttons right here on the screen because it's the first time she's been here. Let's introduce Shelby from Plant Powered Kidneys. Hey, Shelby, how you doing? Hi, hi, I'm doing well. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> Woohoo! So, so yeah. <laughs> this is your first time. No one knows who you are. Can you tell us a little Not bit yet. about yourself? <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, so, um, my name is Shelby, and I am a dietitian. So, I work with Plant Powered Kidneys. I work with Jen Hernandez. Um, I have been with um, our practice plant powered kidneys for over a year now. So I've been doing a lot of the behind the scenes work. Um, I've been, you know, responding to emails, helping out with the, um, with the online course. I've been doing a lot of like the educational materials. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things that I've been doing with the practice, but um, now I'm taking on clients just because we know that so many people can benefit from working one-on-one -on -one with a renal dietitian. Um, so so I'm, I'm moving into that role right now, which is really exciting. Um, a little bit about my background. So again, I started working with Jen very, very early in my dietitian career. Um, I also specialize in a lot of like heart problems and, and people with heart disorders. So um, really my focus is people who have um, like high blood pressure or um, any other kind of like um, heart issues and kidney disease as well. Um, so that's really where my focus is. And I also focus on um, kidney warriors in the early stages of, of kidney disease. So, so about one through three. So that's really where my focus is. And that's what I absolutely love doing. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and to get to know a lot more kidney warriors across, across the globe. Yeah. And what's cool is you and Jen work so well together because she yeah. focuses a lot more on the later stages, kidney disease and, um, yeah. dialysis, um, mm -hmm. which I always kind of forget is a part of kidney disease for many people that dialysis <laughs> stage and you're there yeah. at the earlier stages overlapping into stage three. So together you mm -hmm. guys are covering the entire spectrum of kidney issues. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, 
you know, that was that was our goal with me coming on and, and taking people on one on one is to be able to reach as many kidney warriors as we possibly can. And so, like you said, I, I'm taking on, um, you know, the the uh, other end of, of kidney disease, I guess. And then, you know, Jen has the other end. So, yeah, it, it's really great that we get to work together in, in this kind of capacity. Yep. And then you also specialize yeah. in cardiovascular health, which is so important for Absolutely. kidney disease. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, I, and I actually do still do a little bit of work um, at, at one of the local hospitals. So I'm really um, fortunate to be able to do that as well as, as work one-on-one -on -one, um, at Plant Powered Kidneys. So. Yeah. Now when you said local hospitals, where are you located? Cause I'm sitting here and <laughs> I had to think about it. Cincinnati, Ohio. Jen okay. used to be in lovely Hawaii, I and now know. she's just south of me in, in yep. one of the states. I can't remember which one. Kentucky. She's, she's, Kentucky. She's very close. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And so I'm located in colorful Colorado. So awesome. One of the yeah, so one of the really great things about um, us being a virtual practice is that Jen and I can live in different states and we can still see, you know, Kenyan warriors across the U.S. So I'm located in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and it, it's really great. I love the mountains, mountain biking and, and hiking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really fortunate to be here. <laughs> Fantastic. And yes. one of the things, everybody, we're yeah. going to do tonight, if you have questions for Shelby, post mm -hmm. them down below. Usually we kind of... Yeah sprinkle in a few questions here and there and we try to get to a, a few of them at the very end but for tonight this special friday show we're opening it up to everybody you've got a yeah. brand new <laughs> renal dietitian right here if you're afraid to eat you want to know something about her experience or you, you want mm -hmm. an opinion on something man we can't treat you we can't look at your labs and all that but we have someone here who can probably help answer some questions, shed some light on some things, or maybe even, you know, help you feel better on, hey, this is what I really need to focus on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, thank you all for, for the, the welcomes and, and, and everything. I'm able to see all those wonderful comments as well. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. quite a few comments and it's thundering <laughs> right now. So I'm hoping the booming oh is not gosh. coming across to everyone. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so any questions that you have, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Yep. Now, um, so. for me, one of the, you know, I'll kind of start off with some questions about myself, yeah. uh, giving people yeah. time to, to post questions. Um, sure. I've never, I never took my health serious until mm. I was forced to, which is a shame. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see our, our school system, our educational system, make health really a priority as well as mm -hmm. finances for people to help them. Um, mm -hmm. But I had high blood pressure going back into my mm. 20s. And oh, wow. I didn't always stay on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never realized just how important cardiovascular health was oh, to yeah. all of us later in life. So I allowed oh, yeah, my blood absolutely. pressure. Yeah. You know, I'd miss a pill here and there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe two weeks I went taking my pills on time. Then like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll stretch them. I'll just take yeah. the morning pill. <laughs> um, right, right. Wasn't a good thing. I'm sure that helped contribute to my, my kidney health. Um, mm -hmm. For those that are mm -hmm. younger that are on high blood, sh blood pressure medication, what's some of the tips mm -hmm. you might have? as far as you know their cardiovascular health to protect their kidneys so they don't end up mm -hmm. where i was yeah definitely um so so one of the things that like like general kind of um healthy behaviors that i like to kind of um emphasize to people is i know this is what one isn't necessarily nutrition related but but staying active so it's really really easy to be super sedentary you know, oh, especially it's really today. Easy. Oh. Yeah, it's easy to sit at your desk and then, um, you know, and then go home, like drive home and then sit in front of the TV. Um, so, mm -hmm. so being active, even if that means, you know, taking a 15 minute walk, something like that, just committing to staying more active throughout um, throughout your life. You know, you don't have to 
you know, join a CrossFit gym if, you, if that's not something that you want to do. But, you know, just staying active, moving around, that's going to be huge for your heart health. Um, and then when we go back to nutrition, of course, you know, we, I think a lot of people here kind of know that going, you know, plant-based is, is really good for your kidneys, but that's going to be good for your heart too. So that's something that I talk with my patients at the hospital with, um, you, who not all of them have kidney disease, but I even talk with them about moving towards a more plant-based diet. So, so really focusing on those plant-based sources of protein, um, you know, not having to have meat every single meal or every single day or something like that. So kind of moving in that direction and incorporating plant-based sources of protein, that's going to be great for your heart too, even if you don't have kidney problems. Um, you know, plenty of fruits and vegetables. It doesn't, matter which ones, just the ones that you like, that's going to be huge. Um, and then another thing that I like to kind of talk about is um, stress management. So when we're oh, talking yes. about heart health, yes, stress is a huge one. Americans are so stressed out and, and people around the globe are so stressed out. But um, that's a huge thing that contributes to, to your heart health, um, to high blood pressure, to all those kinds of things. So not necessarily aiming to not have stress in your life, because that's kind of an unrealistic goal, but, but really aiming to manage that in a healthy way and manage it so that it doesn't get out of control. Um, so whether that be, you know, meditation, walking, you know, reading, um, for some people it's prayer, like wh whatever it is to kind of help you kind of come down. That's another thing um, that I really, you know, like to emphasize to people, um, especially on like a more preventative side. So, so those are, those are my, my big overarching <laughs> recommendations. And I love walking because yeah. not only is it exercise, but it is good for that stress relief. And yes. I'm a big guy. Um, mm -hmm. I, especially with COVID, I, I like to use the mm -hmm. COVID excuse. I've been sitting on my butt too much, either here right. working and my computer, yep. and then I take a yep. break and I go sit in uh -huh. the living room and watch Netflix or something. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh. I know, I know. And it's just so easy to do. Yeah, so yep. easy. And then I have all these excuses. Yeah. Oh, it's hot outside. Oh, it's raining. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm working to break yeah. those excuses. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But if you yep. find like a nice trail or you know, somewhere around your house, you know, if, if it's safe to do so, that's, that's, it's going to be great. It, it does take an effort though. I won't. <laughs> yep. So I, one I, thing yeah, that really worked great for me to, you know, back in the day to keep exercising yeah. was to find mm -hmm. an exercise partner, not oh, your spouse. Yeah. Cause it's no. easy for my <laughs> wife and I to be like, Oh, it's been a long day. The kids yeah. are starting back to school. Let's not go do it. Mm -hmm. You needed somebody else, a neighbor or something, mm -hmm. and you both mm -hmm. held each other responsible. I found right. that so, so helpful. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, 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 I totally agree for sure. So having that that person to, to really kind of push you when maybe you aren't able to push yourself, that's that's huge. Yep. And, so, and yeah. for everyone out there, there's about a 30 second delay from us talking uh -huh. and, 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 and the people out there listening. So Shelby and I, we asked you guys to write some questions. Then we chit chatted to give you guys time to write your questions. Mm -hmm. Cause we need to chit chat <laughs> for a while. So you can hear us tell you, Hey, post your questions. And right. now we're going to start jumping on the questions. Cause they're there. Yay. All right. <laughs> okay. I want to start okay. with Ray's and he okay. asked, um, what's the best way to detect early stages of kidney disease? Oh, that is such a great question. So the early stages of kidney disease, there's not really too many like, you know, unique symptoms, you know, that would that would make you say, oh, I wonder if this is kidney disease. So mm -hmm. one of the big things to do is to constantly be asking your doctor for, you know, copies of your lab results, getting regular labs, um, you know, regular, you know, renal function panels done, um, you know, regularly checking your kidneys at the doctor's office. Um, so, some of that, like that early detection is just being aware that, you know, kidney disease is prevalent and, and really common. Um, so, so just asking your doctor constantly is going to be the best ways to detect it really early. And then once you detect it early, you can do a lot more with it. So yeah, so that's going to be the number one way. Yeah. And it's yeah. a shame that, um, 
we don't realize just how important our kidneys are and that testing your kidney health isn't a standard test they do. They look for sure. those symptoms, which don't really start to manifest until you're really far along with your kidney Absolutely. damage. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I, yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I just had, um, I just had a, a client and she was, she was talking and, and she was like, I had no idea I had kidney disease, you know, and that I was exactly because yeah, she, she was like, I had this primary for forever. And then I switched doctors and my new doctor was like, and you know, and then your kidney disease. And she was like, wait, 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 hold on. I have kidney disease. And, <laughs> and she's like, yeah, it's stage three kidney disease. And, and oh. of course, like she was super proactive and you yeah, know, she very reached good. out to me immediately. Yeah. But, but she was like, why is it stage three? Why wasn't I told when it was stage one, you know, or something like that. So, so it's huge. Just being an advocate for yourself for sure. Yep. And Dawn yeah. asked a great question. I see this type of question all the time. So she is CKD stage four with stable labs. Okay. Way to go, Dawn. That's okay. awesome. That's and awesome. she wants to know your thoughts on non-flat, non-fat plain Greek yogurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so some members of the group repeatedly say no dairy. Yes. So I don't like to say like no anything ever. Um, of, you know, non-fat plain Greek yogurt, we don't have like the problem of like excess saturated fat, you know, we're not necessarily worried about like the added sugar necessarily. Um, but still like those, those, um, those animal type proteins are, are a little bit harder on our kidneys. So, um, I would say if you, if that's something that you enjoy, definitely, you know, include it and work with the dietitian to figure out a way that you can include it. Um, but it wouldn't be something that I would be emphasizing that you include often. Um, dairy is also another, uh, source of, of phosphorus. Um, and so that can be something that can, you know, kind of creep up, um, for people with kidney disease. So that would be something that I would be looking at too. Um, Another thing is that it, it can be higher in protein as well. And so if, you know, you need to be following a lower protein diet or you have a problem getting too much protein, um, you know, that could be something that we would think about as well. But but that hard, you know, like no dairy, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty unrealistic, especially if, if you do like dairy, you know. And so, you know, maybe it's not something that you include all the time, but if it's something that you enjoy, there's certainly ways that we can try to fit it in. Yeah. Portion control was the biggest thing that I learned. Oh, yeah. I love now. Well, I was a bit unique. I needed extra <laughs> potassium. So my doctors okay. encouraged me because of my heart encouraged mm -hmm. me to eat bananas, have avocados in my diet. Um, but other things that I had to limit such as sodium, I quickly mm -hmm. realized, Hey, I can still have the things I like. I just need to know what's in them and adjust how much I eat so that I'm not getting too Absolutely. much of certain things. Um, Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I love salt on watermelon. I, eating watermelon without salt is, oh, it just feels wrong to me. Um, <laughs> so I learned, don't soak it. Just a little bit is good mm -hmm. enough for me. And it just exactly. came out of portion control. I like it. Oh, yeah. Don't eat it every mm -hmm. meal. Don't have it every day. I'm just careful right. when I do. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> now Midwest Midwest Kidney Warriors asked, I love sweets. And when he says love, he means love. Hey, I'm there with you, Midwest Kidney Warrior. Are there any recommendations for sweets for dialysis patients? Oh, for dialysis patients. So I will admit, I don't have that strong dialysis background that, that Jen does for sure. Um, but I will say I love sweets too. So, <laughs> so I'm always thinking about maybe the sweets that are going to be the best for me. Um, but, um, we do know that, you know, ones without a whole bunch of like phosphorus. So maybe, um, uh, it's like, you know, not necessarily like the dark chocolates, things like sour candies, um, gummy candies, those ones tend to be a little bit better. Um, just cause like of the, of the phosphorus content and with sweets, you know, 
I think that there's a lot of people I going back to like that portion control thing, people who will say like no added sugar at all. Again, not necessarily a super realistic way to live. So mm -hmm. if you're just mindful about the portion of, of sweets that you eat and then go for maybe the ones again that like the sour candies or like those kind of hard candies that have a little bit less phosphorus in them, then um then yeah, that would be another another thing to um to to think about. We actually have um on on our plant powered kidneys blog, Jen wrote up a, a fantastic article all about like uh, candy and kidney disease, and um, it, it goes through you know the the best ones, why why they're better than others, um, and that would be a really good resource too. Yes, and for anyone who's never been there, it's plantpoweredkidneys.com. There's also a plant powered kidneys Facebook group, which is fantastic to join. Yeah. There are links yes. down below in the description when we're all done with our video. So you guys can go mm -hmm. bookmark those, join the Facebook group, get lots of other mm -hmm. great info. Mm -hmm. Here's one that's perfect for you with your heart background. Um, uh -huh. Maggie's asking about potassium and kidney disease mm. and also good or bad and phosphorus. Is it good or bad for kidney disease? So what is potassium to kidney disease, good or bad? That is a super, super individualized question. <laughs> I know it's it's not the exact answer that you know most people are looking for. But um, so for a lot of people in like the later stages of kidney disease and, and sometimes dialysis too, um, excessive potassium can be a real problem. Um, so too much potassium can cause irregular heart rhythms and or you know, um, it can cause your heart to stop altogether. So definitely don't want to have excessive potassium. Now, a lot of people in the earlier stages of kidney disease and even into like stage four, if your you know, potassium labs are pretty normal, there's really no limit or restriction or concern with potassium. And then on the other hand, with that, that um, the if we're talking about, you know, hearts and all that kind of stuff, we know that I think a lot of people have their doctors, especially say like, okay, like limit salt, you know, and that'll be good for your heart. But we know that when you limit salt and have a high potassium diet, mm -hmm. that's going to be the best for your heart health. Um, so you kind of, you kind of talked about that when your doctors were telling you to, you know, include yep. more potassium. Yeah. And so, you know, good sources are pot of potassium are going to be, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, you know, there's potassium and greens, you know, there's, there's all sorts of things that are going to be good for your heart health. So, um, Potassium can be something to kind of, you know, be be aware of, especially if, if your labs kind of tell you that you need to be aware of that. Um, but for a lot of people, getting more potassium is going to be really good for your heart health. Yeah, and yeah. it's interesting. When we go on to a lot of the blogs out there, even the big mm -hmm. kidney websites, the big dialysis centers, they talk about limiting potassium, and they forget to say, mm -hmm. if you need to limit it, I was the opposite I ended mm -hmm. up in the ICU because of my heart, which was because of my oh. kidneys and my potassium in, in the labs. I can't remember what the number was, mm -hmm. but it said critically mm -hmm. low and yeah. they hooked up bags of, of potassium and oh IVs. It burns going up and yeah. into your chest. And yeah. I was in and out of consciousness. My potassium was so low. Oh my goodness. And until my my GFR got up to around probably in the low twenties, I was on mm -hmm. a higher potassium diet working with my doctors because mm -hmm. I needed it to mm -hmm. protect my heart. Um mm -hmm. and now I yeah. I actually eat a, a fairly good amount of potassium. I have potatoes, I have mm -hmm. avocados, I have bananas in the morning and right. I, my labs look great, which is fantastic. I can mm -hmm. enjoy a good amount of potassium to protect my heart and my absolutely. kidneys are happy. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and, and you made a great point too. Like there are people who have low potassium and mm -hmm. so you probably need to eat more. So, yep. you know, super individualized, but yeah, potassium is gonna be really protective of your heart. Um, so there's a lot of good reasons to um, to include all those all those good foods that you mentioned. <laughs> yep. So hopefully that helped answer your question, Maggie, about phosphorus and potassium. It's all going to be oh. based on what your labs are. And don't mm -hmm. go by what Dr. Google and Nurse Facebook says or the other mm -hmm. groups. If they, anyone who says 
limit potassium, limit this, limit that. If they're not your doctor or your dietitian, check with mm -hmm. them first. <laughs> right, right. I'll, I'll have a lot of people come to me and they'll think, oh my gosh, like there's all these things that I have to limit. But for a lot of things like on, on the on the internet, those, those restrictions might not apply to every mm -hmm. single kidney warrior. So it's, it's really, you know, figuring out if any of those restrictions apply to you. And then, you know, obviously working with a renal dietitian to, um, to, to figure out, you know, your best diet. <laughs> yep. And so. a question just popped up, which kind of, I like to piggyback on what you just said. Sure. Um, Dawn asked, what's the difference between, um, phosphorus that's plant-based and animal-based and that also is important. What is the source of your phosphorus? Yes, Can you talk a little bit about absolutely. that? Sure. So, so we can go ahead and just talk about, you know, phosphorus in, in general, but, um, phosphorus is, is something that, you know, um, it's one of those nutrients that we look at when people have kidney disease. And so, um, a lot of Americans actually get too much phosphorus. The, you know, the biggest sources of phosphorus in our diet is going to be um, meat, dairy, and then phosphorus additives too. So those are some real big, you know, sources. They're of in everything. In I, I'm a everything. I'm a hillbilly <laughs> and deep down inside. I, I call them the yeah. phosphorus the sneaky snake. It seems like it's yeah. in everything that's not good for yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so. Um, but there are some differences in in types of phosphorus. So when we when we're talking about phosphorus phosphorus additives, those ones your body absorbs about a hundred percent of. Um, so that's a really easy way to get a whole bunch of phosphorus in your diet. Now, when we're talking about naturally occurring phosphorus, your body doesn't quite absorb as much. Um, so meat and dairy, you're going to absorb between like sixty to eighty percent of that phosphorus. Um, grains about 30 percent and then nuts and beans um really any anywhere between like 40 to 60 percent so that absorption rate rate really matters as well and that's kind of why that old recommendation of not including whole grains you can't eat nuts and beans and things like that um because of the phosphorus content oh. we don't really we don't talk about that anymore <laughs> because we know that you really don't absorb quite as much um so again, you're going to absorb almost all of that, those phosphorus additives, and then meat and dairy, usually about 60 to 60 to 80 um, percent. And then when we get into our plant based sources, like our nuts and seeds and grains, you know, it's it's between 30 to 60 percent with those ones. Um, so, you know, again, source source really matters when we're talking about phosphorus. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Diane yeah, has great a question. great question here. <laughs> Yeah. And this may be a little too technical. We're going to get medical here for a moment. Does okay. the thyroid have anything to do with prediabetes and early stages of kidney disease for a senior? Wow, that is quite a medical question. Um, so I will say I, I am not the 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 strongest, you know, I don't work with a lot of thyroid patients, um, but they are usually, yes, like inter intertwined. Mm -hmm. Um Absolutely. And we will see like thyroid changes in people with, with kidney disease. So a lot of times we'll, we'll address, you know, any like, um, in, in thyroid issues there. So, um, I, I, you know, I will say there is some, some connection there and absolutely talk with your doctor and see if there, you know, if you can, um, like piece some of that together, if, if you, if there's anything that you can do about that, um, because yeah, a lot of times they're they're interrelated for sure. And and new research about um, you know kidney disease and thyroid issues, you know that's it's really emerging research. So we're learning a lot more about it. Um, and so I'd really be interested to to read more about that kind of research there, because yes, they're they're absolutely intertwined. Yeah, and I know they were always checking my thyroid, and it was fine. Yeah. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know why they were checking it, but they were in the beginning. All right, here's a question from my dad. Um, this, is a, this is an easy one. Is an air fryer <laughs> as healthy as steaming veggies? I think I know oh, the that's, answer. That's a great question. It definitely can be for sure. Yeah, yeah. An air fryer is a great way to cut back on like a lot of um, like if you at, you know, 
to move away from a whole bunch of added oils. Not that oil is necessarily bad, but Mm -hmm. it's a good way to move away um, and and really, you know, cut back on um, a whole bunch of fat in your diet if you have, you know, heart problems and things like that. Uh, But steaming vegetables is good too. So they're both great ways to get more veggies in, especially, you know, if you have trouble getting veggies in. (laughs) And, you know, if using using either of those methods works for you, absolutely go for it. Um, So, yeah, they're both going to be very healthy. (laughs) I use both of those, an Instapot and a uh, a, a countertop toaster oven. We're making up all sorts of stuff. I love to grill, but it's been too hot recently to go outside and then to turn on a a grill and stand in front of it. (laughs) Right. <laughs> but oh I love all those. It's it's good for variety. I may oh, um, yeah. steam a bunch of, of veggies and throw some kind of spices mm-hmm. on it. And then mm-hmm. for the next meal, maybe I'm I'm doing those in the air fryer um, yeah. or something else. I've even used our yeah. air fryer to try and make a version of potato chips from um, what are those green things called? Um, Plantain? Zucchini. 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 Okay. I've tried because I can cook them in there long enough. They, they'll they they'll start to, to dry out and they're almost like yeah. a chip, which is good for dipping uh-huh. in hummus. They get strong enough Ooh. to dip in hummus. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'll have to try that. <laughs> Another thing that I love and I love to make, I got me a blend uh-huh. tech blender. It like, oh, it'll chop yeah. anything and That's fantastic. Oh, love making it's my great. own hummus. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I recently got a food pre- processor and I think it changed my life. I don't know why I, I got this. Yeah. I, I waited so long to get one, but it's fantastic. So <laughs> I got excited when I got a spiralizer. Yeah. I was like, Hey, oh, I can now yeah. make my own spaghetti and stuff out of veggies. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing what oh. just a little tool can do to help you eat healthier and be healthier. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Now, here is a great question. Um, what sure. is your opinion on intermittent fasting? Oh, this is a good question. And um, it's super popular. Um, so I will say that I have never found that it has been appropriate for any of my clients. Um, I haven't seen extremely strong, you know, long term research about intermittent fasting and and kidney disease. I think there's there's a little bit out there. Um, but, you know, it would also depend on on what your end goal is, you know, if we're talking about intermittent fasting and trying to get, you know, your potassium under control, not not too much going on there. But um, if we're talking about like weight management or something like that, um, I have found that working with clients on, you know, tuning into like hunger and satiety cues, working a little bit more on portion control, um, working it, uh, like working with the quality of the diet, you know, so the quality of the foods that you choose. Um, I found that that's been a little bit more helpful. Um, with intermittent fasting, I also haven't, you know, in my experience, I haven't found anybody that's been able to sustain it for a super long time, um, which is kind of a, another thing that I like to talk to people about is that, you know, are you going to be able to do this if you go on a vacation? You know, if your life gets really busy, is this something that you're going to be able to sustain for a long time? And um, a lot of times the answer is is no. So, so that's kind of my opinion on intermittent fasting. Of course, I'm I'm definitely open to seeing if there's ever any benefit to kidneys or anything like that. Um, But again, a lot of times I like to work on quality of the diet. Again, you know, helping people kind of understand when their body's actually full, um, Mm -hmm. you know, and and, and those kinds of things. So, yeah, yeah, great question, though. (laughs) And it's intermittent fasting. In a way, I do it every day. Actually, we all do. Mm -hmm. We sleep and we don't eat. So we're fasting on that. I right. push myself for my first meal. I get ready in the morning before I start eating. I got sure. you know, get my shower, get dressed. I make sure I'm ready yeah. for work. So it's usually around 10 a.m. before I take my first bite of something. And I've already okay. taken my medications before that. Um, mm-hmm. And then my stomach starts getting upset because I took a bunch of pills and didn't eat. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, that <laughs> drives me to eat. And then I just, I try to cut myself off 
have dinner by 6 p.m., 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. sometimes. And I use intermittent fasting. It's just to not snack in the evening mm-hmm. when I'm sitting down. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Tonight, I'm going to watch season two, episode one of C on Apple TV+. Okay. Plus. I know if I had some kind of snack, I would just be eating it. But for me, sure. the intermittent fasting, I'll go like, oh, nope, it's too late. No eating. I'll oh, eat tomorrow. Okay. And it helps me okay. from uh, not overeating. That's how I use it. Not overeating. Okay. It's my my it's my guardrails in the morning okay. and in the evening. Okay. Before okay. I, I started implementing that, mm-hmm. I would eat. I'd be in bed snacking. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I've got to brush my teeth. Now I'm going to fall yeah. asleep. Wake up, yeah. start snacking, and snack all oh, day yeah. long, plus all the oh, meals. Yeah. <laughs> so I was overeating. Right, right. Yeah. So, so is it more like like a modified kind of intermittent fasting? Yeah, phase? mine is yeah. just okay. I have a I have a I have a, yeah. t- a, a short window that I eat, and sure. the most important okay. thing for me is, at least personally, is not eating too close to bed. I also found I sleep mm. better. And my stomach's mm-hmm. not gi- digesting food and, and making yeah. noises and stuff. If I stop yeah, eating many hours before bed, um, mm-hmm. and I've gotten used to it, I'm no longer sure. hungry at night. Yeah. You know, oh, I'm not wow. reaching for that popcorn or back okay. in the days, a, a bag of Doritos or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the rule of thumb with that one is, is there's not necessarily like a hard time. I think some people are like, not after 6pm, not after 7pm. Really, it's it's when you go to bed, you know, you don't you want to kind of stop eating like two hours before. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of the goal again, because you don't want to be laying down trying to digest a whole bunch of stuff because your body uses gravity to digest you know, your food. And so you want to be, you know, upright, giving your body everything that it needs to properly digest. And then again, you know, you don't want to be focusing on digestion when you're trying to go to sleep. So yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. So not snacking super late at night, focusing a lot yeah. of those calories more towards the beginning of the day is, is huge for sure. Yeah, that's how I do it. It helps me because um, otherwise I'm a, I am eating all day long and that scale yeah. is not happy <laughs> oh yeah (laughs) or i'm not happy with the number the scale's telling me right (laughs) and i know it's not lying it's like right (laughs) all right here's a here's a type of question i get quite often um where a person says is x good for this gfr um and this person's saying are beans good for gfr 25 um How do you respond? I always say, how much? How many are you eating? If you're eating a small amount, that's a big difference in your your eating yeah. four servings at every meal. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that that was going to be my answer too. It's it's how much are you eating? Are you eating you know three cups of black beans you know at at a meal, or are you you know sticking to you know a fourth of a cup? half a cup, something like that. And, and, you know, and what else are you eating throughout the day too? Right. Cause it's, it's really, you know, we're, we're learning more that the kidney diet and, and um, you know, renal nutrition and all that kind of stuff is less about like just eliminating one individual food. And it's more about like your whole diet and, and balancing things out and balancing things throughout the day. Um, so a lot of times, you know, people will be concerned about some of the potassium or some of the phosphorus, um, even sometimes some of the protein that's found in beans. Um, but it's really more about the portion size that you're eating and then, um, you know, how much you're eating in a day. So, it, you know, if at that current GFR you did need a potassium restriction or your doctor talked to you about that or, you know, that was something that was indicated for you, it might just be kind of, you know, balancing out that portion size to make sure that it, it fits into your, you know, your limit for the day. So, um, so again, beans are a great thing to include. They're full of fiber. They're full of nutrients. Um, it's something that I have people include. Um, and then we really just talk about portion sizes and how that can fit into your diet. Yeah. I always think of the diet as a bunch of allowances. I'm allowed this much yeah. sodium, this much mm-hmm. potassium, this much phosphorus, mm-hmm. Um, all these different allowances. And then when I want to eat something, 
I look, ooh, mm-hmm. I really want this. How much of my allowance for the day is it going to consume? How much is left right. over? Is there enough left over for dinner? So I may have mm-hmm. something, like today, I had the healthiest lunch. Um, not very <laughs> filling, very low oh. calorie and healthy. Only because mm-hmm. when we're done our family's going to go out and meet some other family for dinner. And I'm like, okay, okay. I got to save up my allowance because I'm going to sure. eat more. We're going to eat a restaurant. I can't be as uh-huh. as strict or as controlling as I normally am. So that's how uh-huh. I think of it. It's as an allowance. Yeah. And yeah. if I wanted to have beans for lunch, I would just take into account. I, I track them all on my phone. I use a um, mm-hmm. um Coron- coron- chronometer, whatever, chronometer? however it's pronounced. Chronometer. I use that <laughs> yes. one. So many people recommend it and love it. I love it's it too. Great. And I just yep. put the food in there and I'm like, hey, here's what yep. I can have. I still got this much left. Um, so hopefully yeah. that helps other people. It's not that Absolutely. you can't eat beans or a banana or avocado. It's yeah. always how much, how much have you eaten today? And then we all have our own little mm-hmm. allowances. Yeah, when I absolutely when I was diagnosed, my doctor was like, "You get a big old giant potassium allowance. I want you to spend it every day." <laughs> so. Yep, yep. <laughs> so that yeah, that that's awesome. Yeah, allowance or like thinking of it as a budget or something like that. You know, that's mm-hmm. definitely an easier way to kind of think about it because then you can you know you can play with portion sizes. You can add in foods here. You can add in things that you previously thought maybe were. We're off limits. You can just put it into a into a budget or an allowance, and and really, um, you know, expand your variety, you know, a, of what you can include. So yeah, absolutely, that's a great yep. way to put it. And here, <laughs> Helena asked, and I see these types of questions a lot, and I don't know what to say <laughs> when I do see them. How to gain weight? Because that's not my problem. I'm I'm gaining it easy. How do you gain <laughs> weight? She's stage one, so just a little <laughs> tiny bit of kidney disease. And mm-hmm. she's on a low sodium diet, which is good for your heart. We get Absolutely. too much sodium as it is. What's your, yeah. how would you, um, or what are some of the tips you might give to help someone gain weight? Absolutely. So, um, so again, that, that stage one kidney disease, we can do a lot, you know, with it. So we can, um, we have really a, a, not too many restrictions that we have to, you know, put on, um, and not not too strict of a budget or too strict of an allowance. So so we can add in a whole bunch of things. So really things that I like to add in are um, things that are gonna be higher calorie and higher fat too, um, but also the right type of fat. So things that I add in for people are gonna be like heart healthy oils. So things like avocado oil or olive oil. So we'll kind of increase the amount of, of that just to, you know, bump up the amount of calories that you're eating. So that's one thing we'll do. Um, we'll add in avocados. We'll add in nuts. We'll add in seeds where we can. Um, and then we'll do small portions and we'll do, you know, um, or smaller portions of those high calorie things throughout the day. Um, we'll add in a whole bunch of snacks where we can so that it's not overwhelming to have this, you know, massive meal in front of you that you can't feel like you finish, you can finish. So, um, so we'll, we'll do that. And then, um, some other tips is not drinking a whole bunch of water before or during a meal. So I'm not saying don't hydrate, but if, you know, you don't want to fill up your stomach with water, you want to fill it up with those calorie dense foods. So focusing on water, you know, yeah, um, in between meals or, or after a meal or something like that, water or liquids. Um, but yeah, so those are, those are some of the big things that we work on. Um, and then, you know, other things that we would do, I mean, we would add in like, uh, milks instead of water. So a lot of people all have them like make their oatmeal with almond milk or rice milk mm-hmm. instead of water, something like that. So those real small changes that add up to, um, you know, meet those calorie needs throughout the day um, is what I like to focus on. Because definitely with with weight gain, a lot of times it can be overwhelming to eat a whole bunch of food. Um, I've, you know, from from my patients, I've heard that it's a lot harder to gain weight than lose weight that might be <laughs> that i think it's a personal a thing debatable uh, for, yeah <laughs> for me i think i can look at a carb and gain weight uh-huh. okay <laughs> and losing it it's just so hard for me oh yeah <laughs> so 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 both 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 have their challenges for sure yeah 
but, but I, um, I have I friends who can yeah. drop weight quickly and they do have challenges yeah. and I, I love your, yeah, your ideas absolutely. not drinking before substituting mm -hmm. in some milk where you can yeah. to bulk up the calories yeah. that sounds pretty absolutely. simple to kind of make those little yeah. changes just little changes and they and they really add up so and also you know i'll have them track their calories throughout the day and you know if you just for example like if you instead of using one tablespoon of olive oil you use two you've added you know 100 calories in there which adds up throughout the day and you didn't really do too much you know mm -hmm. so it, it's those 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 small changes for sure um some other things is you know talking with your doctor about what kind of exercise is appropriate for you so if you wanted to do like strength training a lot of times we think of exercise just just to lose weight but it can also be something that helps you gain weight um so that's something that you can you know think about as well so very good but we have so many questions i'm just going through them <laughs> <laughs> Here's yeah. one from earlier I'd like to touch on. Um, sure. It's not really a diet question. Um, Keitha, I'm, I believe Keitha's a new viewer. I don't recognize her name. And Hi, she has stage three kidney disease. And she's asking, okay. is it bad? Um, oh. I'm sure you get things like that all the time where the person's just diagnosed. Um, mm -hmm. And stage three is actually pretty early to get diagnosed. Um I, I, I know I was diagnosed at stage five, which was awful. There's very little time to make changes and do things. You're kind of too sure. late at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah. How absolutely. would, how would you, um, answer that question? Is it bad? Yeah. She's stage three. Is it bad? Well, um, so Keitha first, I would say, take a deep breath. So you, you got, you know, you got the diagnosis of stage three kidney disease. Um, and it's, it's serious. So kidney disease is, is very serious. It's not something that you want to ignore or anything like that. Um, but just know that there are tools at your fingertips to, you know, make healthy changes. Um, so there's things that you can do about it. So yes, um, bad isn't the word that I would use. I would say it's serious. Um, that means it's, it's time to make changes. You don't want to wait until it progresses to stage four or stage five, even if that's your doctor's recommendation. Um, you know, it, it's serious. You need to, you know, go ahead and start reaching out um, to different resources, but there are things that you can do about it. So it's, it's not all hope is lost by any means. Oh, um, no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. But it, she's it, in it a good serious. place. She found, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of piggyback on that as a kidney patient, Keitha, mm -hmm. um, start working with the renal dietitian. They're going to look mm -hmm. at what you're eating, how you're eating, they're going to give you so many tips and advice and you may not need to see them very many times, but they're going to make sure mm -hmm. you're living as healthy as possible. To me, that was the big thing. Absolutely. I had to learn mm -hmm. how to be healthy. Stop ordering mm -hmm. every meal through a drive through window. I stopped downing mm -hmm. two liters of Dr. Pepper. I cannot believe I used to drink those with a meal, a <laughs> two liter. Now I'm drinking water with some, you know, mm -hmm. this has got raspberries chopped up in it and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, it is amazing how much of an impact just diet and lifestyle changes can make to the future. Mm -hmm. And Keith, a stage mm -hmm. three doesn't mean you're going to get on dialysis. So mm -hmm. many factors are at play. You want to look at protein leakage. That's a, a huge indicator of future kidney health. Um, mm -hmm. And just being active, living healthy. There are so many things that you can do. And while stage three is scary, no one wants to be diagnosed with kidney disease. And like Shelby said, it is serious, but if, you know, it, it, I can't, it's hard to say it, but I just want to say you're so lucky to find out so early. You've got time to make changes and, and right. you can influence the speed of the direction your kidney disease is going to progress. So I encourage you be proactive, learn what you can working with a renal mm -hmm. dietitian can really help make sure you're living as and eating as healthy as possible. And eating is one of those things we got we have control over. I get to pick right. what I want to eat. So if someone's gonna say, oh hey, this is better for you, this is better and this is better, do this, be a little more active. And I turned my kidney disease around, uh, which is shocking. My doctor said it was impossible. And I, I was like, I'm gonna prove you wrong. If anyone's gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I did it. <laughs> So hopefully that gives her a bit of motivation and she feels a little better. Yes. It, it's not as bad 
Um, it is serious. Uh, yeah, bad is not mm-hmm. the right word. Mm-hmm. All righty. Yes. Let me go through some yes. more of these questions. Boy, and if you see any questions sure. on your end, you're like, hey, I want to jump in and answer this one. Feel free. Sure, sure, absolutely. Someone asked, I mean, what's a good go... hummus to buy? Do you have a, one you recommend? I, I love oh, to make my own. Great. Sure, so yeah, cheap. making your own. <laughs> cheap, you get to control what ingredients are in there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so the one that I recommend, I'm not sure... I don't know if it's just the Colorado thing or not, Mm -hmm. but, uh, it is, uh, it's called like blue moose or something like that, but that one's it's low sodium. Um, Mm. there's not, you know, a whole bunch of, um, you know, a whole bunch of fat or anything like that in there. Um, so that is the one that I recommend. Um, some things that again, you want to look for when you're looking at any packaged item, you know, is there added potassium? Is there added phosphorus in the ingredients? So those are some big things to look out for. Um, And then, you know, also looking at the sodium content. So that's something that, you know, that might have some sodium in there too. And so if you need to follow a sodium restriction, looking at the sodium as well. Uh, But that's the brand that I like or making it at home is is another really good one. So yeah, I just, I just take a little bit of um, avocado oil and and Mm -hmm. the beans, throw in some garlic, Mm -hmm. maybe grill up some, some uh, red peppers and put them in the blender the the hardest (laughs) part about making your own hummus is you need Mm -hmm. a good blender or good food processor it gets a workout (laughs) oh yes absolutely absolutely (laughs) but our whole family loves it i can have a giant tub and it cost me like i don't know maybe three dollars a huge tub and i go to the store buy a tiny tub for five bucks Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like making yeah. it myself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, if, if you are, don't have a good food processor or blender on hand, there are some good brands out there. But, um, yeah, it, it's just a matter of looking looking for them. So, yeah, Blue, Blue Moose is a good one. Again, it's smaller and it's probably a little bit more expensive. But then, of course, making it at home is a good one, too. <laughs> yeah, and hummus is so good on so many things. <laughs> so good. Oh, my goodness. Veggies. Have you oh, tried yes. chocolate hummus yet? <laughs> no. Well, that sounds scary to me. I'm not a fan of I chocolate. I like Hershey's oh, okay. milk chocolate um, okay. or white chocolate. But mm-hmm. I, okay. like the Easter chocolate, I just don't like the taste of okay. it or okay. dark chocolate. <laughs> Um, They've gotten pretty adventurous with the hummus flavors, and so there's chocolate hummus now. <laughs> chocolate hum- Holy cow. And it sounds scary. Yeah. It sounds scary. It sounds scary, but it, I promise it's not. <laughs> All righty. Oh, so goodness. Joanne asked okay. how much she's, – she's having trouble. She's feeling hungry at night. She's not sure oh. how much food to eat for a meal. So this is something okay. that sounds like a problem a lot of us have that we have to work through. Absolutely. This is a huge problem that I see with a lot of, um, you know, kidney warriors because there's like, you know, when you go on the internet, there's so many lists of things not to eat. So then when it comes to actually, you know, making a meal, what, what mm-hmm. are you going to put? Exactly. What are you going to put in there? It's like I can have <laughs> water and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, you know, a good calorie range for a meal it's going to depend on the person, you know, it's going to depend on your activity level. It's going to depend on, you know, any kind of weight management things that we're working on. Um, but generally I like to do between like 400 and 600 calories in a meal. Um, that's, that's kind of a general range that I aim for when you do anything less than that, it's, it's not a meal anymore, you know? Um, so that's kind of the general range that I like to, um, that I like to keep people in. And then, you know, if you are really hungry at night, that is just one indication to me that, okay, maybe you're just not eating enough satisfying foods throughout the day, you know? So maybe we just need to kind of focus a lot more of those calories early on in the day. Maybe we need to, you know, add some fiber in earlier throughout the day. Maybe we need to add in. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe we need to add in some more 
um, you know, calorie dense and nutrient dense foods throughout the day um, to kind of address that that hunger at night, because we don't we don't want you to be hungry all the time. We don't want you to feel like you're starved at the end of the night by any means. So those are some things that, that I'll kind of look at, you know, when we're um, when I'm working with somebody and they're like, oh, I'm really hungry at night. So those are some things that I'll look at. Yep. Yeah. Now, what do you think about mm-hmm. using a protein drink as a meal replacement? Oh, that is a great question. Um, so for kidney patients specifically, um, I don't really usually recommend like any type of protein powders or protein drinks or anything like that, um, especially if we're trying to keep a more moderate protein diet or if somebody needs to, you know, kind of stick to a lower protein um you know, range throughout the day. Um, There are some cases where like a a shake or like a smoothie or something like that can just be an easy option as a meal replacement. Um, But I tend to kind of move people away from adding like a protein powder or something like that to a smoothie. Again, just because that's quite a bit of protein and that can be really hard on on kidneys that have experienced some damage. Um, So a lot of times I'll have people add, you know, things like, almond butter to make it, you know, a little bit more of a meal. And that'll add some protein, but not, not a whole bunch. Um, but I'll have them add, you know, a whole bunch of fruits, vegetables, Mm -hmm. um, you know, plant-based milks, things like that. Um, but I usually don't like if, if you went to the store and you saw like a protein or shake or something like that, that's not necessarily something that we would do for, for a kidney patient, um, in, in a lot of cases. Yeah, so many yeah. additives and so many of those. Oh, yeah. That's a great point, too. So many, especially yeah. those phosphorus. Some of those I look at, oh. my wife think, oh, is this healthy? And I look at the uh-huh. back to read the label, and her kidneys are fine, uh-huh. so she can she can handle sure. it. But I'm like, phosphorus, phosphorus. Okay, there's, there's five different forms of phosphorus in this. This is not healthy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> it's no, chocolate-flavored no, no. chemicals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff that you definitely don't need, especially if you have kidney problems too. So yeah. Oh, we just got a. <laughs> oh, hey point. Benjamin, thank you for the super chat, Benjamin. He just donated five dollars to help support Dad TV. Um, That's and fantastic. he knows that when he does make a donation, it's real big on my screen. He asks a awesome. question: <laughs> Does kidney disease, does mild kidney disease, always progress to stage one? Mild kidney disease always progress to stage one. Um, Always isn't necessarily a word I like to use. There's, there's different cases for sure. Um, But, but if, I mean, you know, if there is any sort of kidney damage, you want to go ahead and take action, you know, so that it doesn't progress to stage one. So there there's, or, you know, progress at all, you know, so mm-hmm. um, any sort of indication of any kind of kidney damage, go ahead and, and take action so that it doesn't progress to anything at all. And so it doesn't always have to. <laughs> yeah. And I'm it not can, a fan of the stages. The, the yeah. stages are missing so much information that's valuable, such as mm-hmm. age, a person mm-hmm. who is mm-hmm. 85 years old, and mm-hmm. stage 3B, mm-hmm. no problem. 3B, 85 mm-hmm. years old, they're going to die of something else before their kidneys ever give them any problems. But mm-hmm. someone who's 22 and stage mm-hmm. 3B, that is far more serious. They've got a lot of life ahead of them, a lot of time for it to sure. decline. So it's really mm-hmm. important to do what you can to slow down the progression, exactly. be healthy, eat healthy, exactly. stay active. If you're smoking, Get rid of smoking, any of those bad exactly. habits. Exactly. Using, sure. oh, I need to get a prop here, a, a, a bottle of ibuprofen. <laughs> Using any, you know, insads like Inset. ibuprofen yeah. and stuff. <laughs> you right. know, cut, be careful on those. Long term or heavy Absolutely. use, definitely not good for you. Sure. Um, sure. That, that's what yeah. got me was. Using those. And, mm-hmm. and you don't necessarily, and like you were saying, you know, you don't necessarily need a specific stage or anything like that to go ahead and start taking care of your kidney disease. Go, exactly. just go ahead and, and, and start. Yeah. There should yeah. be no like, okay, now we start making changes, you know, when you're this far down the road, go ahead and, and start making healthy changes. For sure. Yep. And if it's good for your kidneys, it's probably good for your heart, which is good for you. <laughs> And for quality of mm-hmm. life and life expectancy and all that, uh, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour, but 
sure. just to kind of help um, build on what we're saying for Benjamin. I was on a path to an early death. I was going to have a heart attack again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That word again. Uh, I I was overweight, not doing enough. I was in bad Mm -hmm. shape and I had no reason or no, no drive to make Mm -hmm. changes, to be healthy. When my kidneys Mm -hmm. failed, that was the wake up call that I needed Mm -hmm. to suddenly start being healthy. My doctors, mm-hmm. they tell me, holy cow, you've done so much better. You've gotten your, your heart's doing better. You're now mm-hmm. going to live longer because of your kidney disease than before. The path you were on wow. was was not good. I was just spiraling out of control, not making my yeah. health a priority. Now, sure. I'm always thinking about my health. Sodium, staying okay. hydrated, being active. I have added right. years or maybe even decades to my life. Mm-hmm. Because of my kidney problem. It made me aware of how wow. important it is to be healthy. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's that's huge. That's huge. Now we are at the top of the hour. Are there any <laughs> questions you may have seen that I didn't get to? There's there's quite a few we didn't have a chance to get oh, to. Oh, I know. <laughs> any that you might want to touch on as like a oh, final my one? Oh, goodness. Um, I did want to talk about like uh, Don Gardner asked, what are some few ingredient healthy breakfast ideas? I love that. Um, especially, you know, a lot of people are like really busy in the morning or, you know, don't want to cook a whole bunch in the morning, which I totally understand. Um, so oatmeal is fantastic. If you did oats, if you made it with like a plant-based milk or, or water or something like that, you know, topped it with some um some fruit and, you know, chop up some nuts if you wanted to, that's awesome. If you wanted to do something like um, overnight oats, that's really cool too, or like a chia pudding. So if you just did, you know, chia seeds, you did like a plant-based milk, some fruit, something like that, that's a great one. Or you could do that with oats and chia seeds too, because it'll form like a gel. So that's a really, really cool um, breakfast to do. Um, If you wanted to do something like, Oh man, there's, there's just so many, (laughs) I mean, there's, there's even great, like, um, you know, if you wanted to do like cereals too, you know, if you picked out one that like didn't have a, you know, any potassium or phosphorus additives, um, was low in added sugar, like a whole grain cereal, something Mm -hmm. like that. Um, and then you did some plant-based milk and some fruit on top. That's easy, you know? Um, so, so there's, there's a lot of different things, but I wanted to talk about that one because awesome. um, (laughs) Don said, thank you. She's disabled. So these are great ideas. So she doesn't have to spend time with all these different ingredients, figuring it out. Fantastic. Fantastic. You are welcome, Don. (laughs) So, oh, fantastic. Well, that pretty much, we have used up the entire hour. If anyone wants to learn more about you or even see if they can work with you. Um, yeah. they go to plantpoweredkidneys.com. There's also yeah. a link directly to your page in the description below this video. Um, Fantastic. you will be back again. Hey, everybody, yeah. this isn't the first and only time. I think everyone has been <laughs> so excited. They love having Great. anyone who can help share information. Cause as a kidney warrior, we're kind of lost. There's all those no, 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 no. And so many sure. of those Facebook groups are not really support mm-hmm. groups. They're saying, avoid this, avoid that. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing when you work with a renal dietitian. instead of no, it's mm-hmm. really how much do you want to eat? How much? Yeah. yeah. What else can we add in? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and I love yeah, that yeah. I was afraid to eat. And then once I got with a renal dietitian, it's like, no, 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 James, you're doing it all wrong. You know, here, you, well, let's show you how to eat the things you like. Right. And all of a sudden, right. the world got so much easier and my health started improving. And I, I feel like right. I didn't really give up anything except the convenience of ordering fast food. <laughs> <laughs> that convenience factor is huge, but but absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking on new clients right now. So. Um, you know, if, if that is something, then, you know, um, please feel free to, to reach out and, and all that. Awesome. So I, I'm really glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me on.
Awesome. Oh, this has been great. All right, everybody. Yeah. This is the end of the week. I will be back (laughs) on Tuesday with Jen Mm -hmm. from Plant Power Kidneys. So now we got two people from Plant Power (laughs) Kidneys helping you kick kidney disease to the curb. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.